So when we left last week, we did that graphing worksheet and we talked about, we, we, we went through what the graph should look like and we talked about some of them. I want to today take a look at some specific ones. The ones that formed lines. Can you give me which, which numbers on the graph? I know the first one formed straight line. Was it one and two both did lines? Yeah. After that, what was it? There's at least four of them that form straight lines on the graph. I think it was um, the third one did a... The third, well, the, the third and the fourth did curves. The third one was a parabola. The fourth one was a... I think the fifth one was a line. I think the tenth one, the last one was a line. Everything else had some sort of a curve to it. So anyway, if you look at those four equations on that worksheet, the question is, what is different about those from those equations to the other ones that would cause them to make a straight line and the other ones not to? Well, as you look at them, there are certain things that those equations don't have that the other ones do. Like number three. What's number three have? It's different from the first two. <coughs> yep, number three. Okay, the x squared. In other words, there's a power on the x, or a power on the variable. In fact, number four is a similar thing. What's in number four? Number four has that square root in it, right? Mm -hmm. A square root is actually the same thing as a power. Technically, it's a power of one half. So a power on the variable or a root. If it has a power on one of the variables or a root on one of the variables, it will not form a straight line. What are some other things? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember the, the worksheet. Number six had something going on. What's going on in number six? The equation for number six is y equals 2 to the power of x. You can see what's going on there. The variable itself is the power, right? X is the power in that equation. What's that? For what value of X? For negative 2? For Y equals 2 to the X, I mean? For problem number 6? Um, if Y is negative 2, or if X is negative 2, Y should be 0.25. The variable was a power. And having that variable in the power made it not a straight line. It made that exponential type curve kind of goes like that. Um, the other one is probably, I believe it's number 8 down there. And number 8, what was the equation there? Number 8 was... 8 over x. 8 divided by x, in other words. And that equation, we're dividing by a variable. These are the three things, I often call them the don'ts or the three don'ts of linear equations. Those are the three things that linear equations do not have. They cannot have. No powers on or, or roots on any of the variables. None of the variables can be a power. And you can't divide by a variable. So if, if you use those rules, you can look at an equation and generally very quickly figure out whether it's going to be a line or not. Like y equals 7x plus 23. Is that going to be a line? That's going to be a line. Y equals 5x plus 7 squared. Is that going to be a line? No. Why not? Careful. That's 7 squared. Is that one of our things? No. No, we said you can't have a power on the variable. 7 is not a variable. That's just 7 squared is just 49. That's y equals 5x plus 49. 
That'll be a line. That one's fine. How about that one? There's a divide in there. Is that a problem? No. No, that's just y equals 0.6x is all that is. That's going to be a line. How about this one? That's not going to be straight line. Why not? Because it's uh, 2x. It's x squared. There's a power on the variable. <coughs> How about that one? That one's fine. Good. How about that one? Dividing by x. That's not a line. Nope, that one does not work. Nope, can't divide by x. How about that one? Why not? Yeah, the variable, there's an x in the power there. That one can't work. So we can look at an equation and very quickly determine if it's going to be a line or not. Once we know it's a line, there are some shortcuts. To figure out those shortcuts, let's take a look. Need those yet for a second? You got them? Let's take a look at probably our simplest lines we can get. Let's try y equals x. If we're going to graph that, pretty simple. If x is 0, what's y? 0. If x is negative 2, what's y? Negative 2. If x is 3, what's y? 3. We get this line that goes through the, through the center of our graph, through that origin we called it, remember? And it goes corner to corner across our graph. Um, that's probably our simplest equation we can have for a straight line, y equals x. But what are some things we could do to make it more complex? Well, we might have this, y equals x plus 2. There's a reason I wrote it up there. Now if x is 0, what's y? Well, 0 plus 2 is 2. If x is 1, what's y? 3. If x is 3, what's y? 5. We're just taking 2 and adding it to each value. What happens is we graph that out. You can see it's the same line just moved up two spots. Same angle across the graph and everything. So based on that, what do you think it would look like if we did y equals x minus 3? Same graph, just move down three spots. Instead of going through the origin or the center, it goes down three spots from there. It goes through there. <coughs> All graphs start at the center, at the origin. And they either move, the, that starting spot gets moved up or down from there. Well, something else we could do, we might have y equals 2 times that. We could multiply the variable instead of adding or subtracting. Now if x equals 0, what's y? Well, still 0, right? 2 times 0 is 0. But if x is 1, what's y? What's 1 times 2? Two? 2. If x is 2, y would be 4. If x is negative 1, y would be negative 2. We get a line like that. It goes back to the going, it goes to the origin again. But now it's, it's steeper. It has a steeper angle. How do you think we'd make it go shallower? We might do x divided by 2. Well, algebraically, we don't like to divide. What we would normally do is we'd write it like this. y equals 1 half times x. That's the same as dividing by 2. Well, we'll get there. Don't rush us. So now if x is 0, y is still 0. But if x is 2, y is only 1. If x is 4, y is 2. We graph that line, and you can see we get a shallower line. So far, however, all of our lines have gone up as we move from left to right. 
What would we have to do to get a line to go down like that? Uh, a negative. A negative. There we go. If y equals a negative 2x, it's going to give us a line like this. So really, there are only two things we can do to a line to alter it. We can move it up or down from the center here, and we can change the angle at which it goes across the graph. So if I have the equation y equals 3x minus 1, that minus 1 is telling us that from the center, we move down 1. It starts down here. That 3 is telling us that it's steeper than normal, something like that. Well, the moving up or down from the center, that's pretty exact. So what we want to do is we want to look at this here, the, the steepness, and make that more exact. Well, the technical term for that is called the slope. Determines what angle that line goes across the graph. And the slope has two parts, rise and a run. <coughs> it's always in a fraction like that. The top number is the rise, it's the up or down, and the run is left to right. Now we look at the 3, and it doesn't look like a fraction, does it? How can we turn 3 into a fraction? Put it over 1. 3 over 1. So now over here, from the starting point, that's telling us we go up 3. We rise 3. 1, 2, 3. And we go over, or we run 1. And there's a second point on the line. So our line goes through those two points. That works. So if we look at some examples, like y equals 1 half x plus 3. Where's this equation going to start? Where's this line going to start? The adding or subtracted number tells us where to start. From the origin, we go up 1, 2, 3, and that is where we start. The slope, then, is where we go from there, 1 half, which tells us from that starting point, we rise how much? 1, so from here we go up 1, and we run 2, so up 1 over 2. There's our second point right there. Our line goes through those two points, like that. So y equals 3 fourths x minus 2. Where are we going to start? Where are we going to start? Yeah, from the center we go down two. We're going to start right there. From there, where are we going to go? Up three. Perfect. Three, four slopes. From there we go up three, over four. There's our second point. Our line goes through them. Like that. There we go. What do you think? Simple. <laughs> sure. Now this one starts out at positive 1. So right there from the center we go up 1. That's our starting point. The slope, however, is a negative 2 thirds. Now the negative goes with the rise usually. So instead of going up 2, this one goes down 2. The run still goes to the right, so we go over 1, 2, 3, right there. So the positive or negative affects the rise, not the run. So on this one, where do we start? Now this equation got moved around a little bit. What number is added or subtracted? Now, what number is not with the x? 3. It's a positive 3, which means from the center we go up 3. We start right there. Now, that's a negative 2x. So, that's a negative 2 slope. So, that's 2 over 1. So, from that point we go down 2, down two over 1. That's a line. If you wanted to go down 2 over 1 and down 2 over 1, you can keep going. Yes, it makes it a little bit easier to put it on the graph. Well, well, 
To make a line? Three points to guarantee a line, yeah. <coughs> well, two points do define a line, but it's that third point verifies that the first two are correct. Oh, why is it not by itself anymore? Okay, what does that mean? Yeah, we need to make y be by itself. Just like before when we were solving equations, we look at the side with the y on it, and we ask what's keeping it from being alone? Well, it's the 4. The 4 has been added, so we get rid of it by subtracting it. Good. So we are going to take and subtract 4. Oops, come here. Now we subtract 4 and it's gone, leaving us with y. Now when we add or subtract, we only have to add or subtract to one piece on each side of the equation. So on the right side over here, where can I subtract 4 from? The 1. This is 1 third x. That has a different name. It has the name of x. We cannot subtract 4 from that. So the 1 third x is not going to change. Positive 1 minus 4 is a negative 3. So going over here, we're going to start at negative 3. And then from there, we're going to go up 1 over 3. There we go. Ta-da. Any thoughts? Cool. Well, we can also run into things like this. In this case, again, y is not by itself. What's keeping y from being by itself? The 2. What operation is attaching it to the y? It's multiplied, right? So to get rid of it, we're going to divide. Now, when we multiply or divide, we have to do it to the whole equation. So we divide by 2 there to get y. On the other side, we have to multiply every piece by 2. Now, 3x divided by 2, I'm going to show you a little trick here. 3x divided by 2, well, 3 divided by 2 is just 3 over 2. We can use that link between division and fractions. Just take the division problem and turn it into a fraction. 3 divided by 2 is 3 over 2. The x is still there, so it's just 3 over 2x. We don't, we don't have to turn it into a decimal. We leave it as a fraction because it's slow. Then the positive 4 divided by 2 is 2. So where do I start on the graph? It up two, there's my starting point, and from there, up three over two, three halves, three over two. There's my line. Not so bad? Okay. Um, let's say we have. Okay, here. <clears throat> Again, we're going to have to get y by itself. What am I going to have to do? I'm going to start up by adding 3. Get sort of that. Remember, when I add or subtract, I only have to do it to one piece on each side. So the negative 3 is gone here, leaving with 2y. Over here, the only place I can add 3 to is the negative 5. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Now what? Divide by... 2 makes that go away, leaving me with y. I divide by 2 here. Now, again, I'm going to think of this x as 1x. 1x divided by 2 is going to be just 1 over 2 times x, or 1 half x. This is a negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. So now we graph that. Where do we start? Go down to negative 1, and then from there, up 1 over 2. There's my second point. Line. Yep. Usually, what it'll do is it'll give you a point, it'll give you a graph of the line, and you gotta pull it, stretch it, and stop in certain, move the stuff to certain spots on the graph. 
Okay, that shouldn't be too bad. It'll take you a second to figure it out, but it won't be too bad. Oh, let's look at one more. Tell me what to do here. You're still trying to get y by itself. It's been multiplied by 3 and it's had 4x added to it. To get rid of it, you're going to subtract the 4x. Nope. So you subtract 4x. So now this is 3y here is all by itself. What is 6 minus 4x? Trick question. It's 6 minus 4x. Now what? Divide by 3. Very good. So y equals what? 6 divided by 3? 2. Negative 4x divided by 3? It's negative 4 over 3x. Where are we going to start on our graph there? Start out at up 2. Not up 4. Down 4 because it's a negative 4 thirds over 3. There's my second point right there. What do you think? There's a new quiz due tomorrow. There's new homework due for, for Wednesday.